There are so many different ways to clean shoes, but to be honest with you, I think I've got it figured out. I think that I know the fastest and easiest way to clean up shoes. And today I'm gonna to show you exactly what my cleaning setup looks like and all the tools that I use to clean shoes. So if you cannot tell, I recently moved into a garage at my storage unit. This is where I will be cleaning and photographing shoes from here on out. The decision to do this was to take basically all of the work stuff out of my apartment and move it all into one area to basically streamline things, make sure that I'm staying productive and making sure that I can set up some cleaning and photography setups that are as efficient as possible. And today we're going over that cleaning setup that you see behind me. To give you a basic overview, I like to do the cleaning standing up. So I'm at a standing desk and I've got all of my cleaning supplies laid out here in front of me. I'm standing on a, what do you call these, like a rubber mat to, you know, alleviate some of the aches that you get with standing for long periods of time. I just got that at Goodwill for like a couple bucks just the other day. And then underneath my cleaning setup is where I keep my shoe trees. The reason that I have them at my photo setup, I have a bin of large shoe trees and a bin of small shoe trees. I use these so I can stuff the shoe and really make it look as if there's a foot inside the shoe and bring out any imperfections that maybe you can't see when the shoe is kind of like just relaxed. When you put that shoe tree in there, it really brings out anything that you might need to see that you might need to clean up as well as I can just toss them on the shoe racks that are to my left here to my right when I'm cleaning and then they are completely ready to photograph. They've already got the shoe trees in them and then when I come in to photograph the next morning, they're already on this rack ready to be photographed. All I got to do is pull them, take the photos and move on. And then the only other thing to mention about the actual area that I'm in, I've got a trash bin sitting right next to me to throw away all of the uh, the Goodwill tags or any thrift store tags or any anything that comes off the shoes. I've got a nice trash can right here. And then this shelf over next to me is just for extra supplies. If I'm photographing dress shoes or cleaning dress shoes, I've got a few of these wooden dress shoe trees as well as some of these came out of bubble wrap rolls. Once the bubble wrap roll ran out, I kept the cardboard inserts and I use these to photograph boots. You can also use like pool noodles and stuff like that. And then I've got some extra like insoles as well as some uh, shoelaces over here, just in case any shoes are missing. One of those two things, I have them at the ready over here. And then just extra supplies under the table in that cart you see off to my right. And then before we hop into the actual table and show you all of the little things that I use to clean shoes, uh, one of the most important things is light. I have this clamp lamp set up right over here somewhere. It's just on a camera tripod. It's a super cheap setup. I got the tripod at Goodwill, the clamp lamp at Goodwill. I just have a daylight bulb in there. And then this, I don't think that this is super necessary, but I, I just don't like looking directly into the light all day. So I have that light diffuser on there. Those only cost a few dollars on Amazon. So I make sure that the cleaning setup is nice and lit. As long as it is lit up, it is easy to see what areas of the shoes need to be cleaned. So with that being said, I'm gonna move this camera angle and show you guys exactly everything that I use to clean shoes. All right, so first things first, to make the cleaning process a whole lot easier, you need to have the cleaning process in mind when you're outsourcing shoes. This is only for resellers. If you are just wanting to clean your personal pairs of shoes, you can keep watching. You're gonna learn plenty in this video. But if you are a reseller and you're outsourcing shoes to then resell online, when you are purchasing those shoes, you need to make sure that your purchasing decisions match your cleaning ambitions. When you are purchasing those shoes, you need to make sure that your purchasing decisions match your cleaning ambitions, if that makes sense. This is a prime example of the majority of the shoes that I source. Minimal cleaning on the bottom. Basically, all we need to do is get this photo ready, take the stickers off, and wipe off this price on the bottom, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna give you guys an example of how I take care of my normal pair of shoes. This is only gonna take me a few seconds to do. Since the Goodwill sticker is inside this shoe, uh, most of the time the stickers will just peel right out. But just in the off case that you have a sticker that is hard to get out, I have this heat gun. Um, this stays plugged into the outlet that is in the front of my desk right here, and whenever I have a troublesome sticker, I just pop this on. I'll heat the sticker up for just a second, turn the heat gun off, and then that sticker should just come right out and I'll toss that in my trash down here. Now, since we're getting these shoes photo ready, I'm gonna grab a couple shoe trees from underneath my desk here and we're gonna fill the shoes and get them appearing as they would if they were on someone's foot. If you guys wanna pick up these shoe trees, I actually sell them. If you've been following the channel, you know that, that is something that I've recently released is these Dealing with Dalton shoe trees. I have two sizes, they'll fit youth sizes up to large men's sizes. Um, click the link down in the description below if you want to pick some up. 
Now, before I put the shoe tree in, as you can see, I've tucked the laces into the shoe because when we're photographing these, we really don't want the laces to just be strung out over the shoe. Like if you go to a retailer's website and you look at their brand new shoe listings like nike.com, their shoelaces are tucked inside the shoe. They, they want you to see the shoe as it would appear on someone's foot without the laces interfering with any of that. So once you get that done, we're just gonna pop this shoe tree right in there. I like to make sure that the tongue is nice and visible if there's any you know, accents on the tongue here. And then the only thing that we need to do with these shoes, really, I don't see any dirt other than where the thrift store wrote the price on the bottom here. Now with getting prices off the bottom of the shoe, I use acetone. They come in two different types of bottles. You got this one with this regular lid. This is a refill bottle. And then you have this other bottle that the, the lid pops up. It's like a it's like a squirt, squirt, squirt top up here. And then all we're gonna do is get the one that has the squirt, 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 squirtable top. We're gonna get a rag and we're just gonna press down on this a couple times. Using this is gonna make the, the acetone last much longer than if you just use the regular bottle. So I highly recommend using that type of bottle and then just refilling it with the regular acetone bottles. Uh, just an easy way to save money on some cleaning supplies. And then once you got that ready, you can just literally wipe the price off and you're good to go. If under any circumstance, the price will not come off with the acetone, I waste no time overthinking this. I'm not gonna try a ton of different methods. I literally just have a Sharpie right here at the ready. If for some reason the price won't come off with acetone because the acetone honestly only works about 60% of the time, I'm gonna take the Sharpie and then just write over it, scribble over it. You can add a one in front of it. So instead of it saying $20, it says $120. You can change the price. Just whatever, or you can just leave the price on the bottom. Most buyers don't care. It's the bottom of the shoes. They're gonna be walking on them anyway. The next pair that I've got here is these Cole Haan sandals. There's a few different things that I'm gonna to use to clean these up and get them ready to be photographed. So we're gonna go over this next. As you can see, there is a ton of rocks. I don't know if you can see through the camera, but in the tread, there are tons and tons of rocks down there. All that you'll need to pick up is one of these picks. You can get these at a hardware store. You can get them at Walmart. I'll leave a link to everything that I use down in the description. If you want to pick them up from Amazon, they are affiliate links. So they'll help the channel out just a little bit. Uh, but that is an easy place to pick them up. If you want to pick them up locally, most, most Walmarts are going to pick up everything that we're using in this video. Uh, but with that being said, this pick right here, you're just literally just going to run across the rocks a few times and they're just, they're going to pop right out. It's, it's as simple as that. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out the rest of these rocks and then I'll be back shortly. Now, I got all the rocks cleared out, but as you can see, there's some spots up here that um, it was just dirt that was clumped up. So an easy way to get that dirt out is just grab a regular brush like this one, and then we'll just run over the bottom of the shoes a couple times, and then this shoe is completely cleaned and ready to list. One thing I will say about sandals, I'd say that these wouldn't typically need anything in them for presentation. They seem to hold their form pretty well, but for sandals, I do have these plastic um, I guess these are called sandal shoe trees. I don't know what to call them. Uh, I just pop them in there just like this. Whenever they are being photographed, this will keep the form of most sandals or shoes that don't have a heel to them and that'll keep them nice and presentable for the pictures. Now here I've got a good example of a dirty midsole that again, looks like it would be very, very difficult to clean up. This is another one that is actually super easy. So I'm gonna show you guys what I use to clean up dirty midsoles such as this one. First off is always gonna stuff the shoe with the shoe tree. And then there's a couple things that we've already gone over. I just need to remove the sticker and clean up the dirt out of the tread on the bottom of the shoe. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. All right, now that I got all of the rocks and the dirt out of the bottom of these shoes, to clean up these midsoles, there's two soaps that I currently use and that is Dawn Power Wash and Mr. Clean Magic Freak. I pair these with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And I'm gonna show you guys just how effective magic erasers and these soaps can be. So first things first is just to spray the shoes with our soap. And just a little bit goes a long way with this. So you don't definitely don't have to overdo it. And then with Mr. Clean Magic Razor, these things tend to, to crumble. So to make them last longer, really don't try to dig into the shoes as hard as you can. It's more about how many times you go over it. So just be very gentle with this and just begin to go over the dirty areas of the shoes. And you're gonna see literally within seconds, the midsole's already looking much, much wider. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and hit the entire shoe and show you what it looks like after. Now, as you can see, this looks much better than it did before, but there are, if you look closely, a few spots that were just a little tougher to get off with the Magic Eraser. Sometimes with like Vans and Converse and shoes like this that have like a textured midsole around the toe, it's hard for the Magic Eraser to really get in there. So what I like to do, if there's ever anything that the Magic Eraser doesn't get off super easily, 
That's when this acetone comes in handy. I'll do this, this just the same way I did with the last pair of shoes. Just gonna get a little bit on this cloth and then we're just gonna wipe that tougher area clean and it's gonna come just about as clean as we want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this shoe and then we'll move on to the next tool that I use when cleaning shoes. All right, so the next couple tools are centered around dress shoes. I've got a pair of Cole Hans right here uh, with the bottoms, it's basically the same thing we've already gone over. I'm gonna use a pick to get the stuff out of the bottom and just brush it down. And then for leather dress shoes, sometimes you'll see scuffing around the toe box or around the heel. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be dress shoes, just any leather shoes in general that have scuffing. One of my favorite things to do to take care of that is use this Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam. Um, when you take the lid off, there is just a little sponge sitting right inside the cap. And then it's just this wax material inside. So we'll just get a little bit on the sponge right here. I'm gonna toss one of these wooden shoe trees inside of the shoe, uh, just so it holds its shape a little better, give us something to brush against. And then we are just going to go over the toe box of the shoe and get all of the scuffs out. I didn't have the best example here. This shoe is not too terribly scuffed up. A little minor wipe down. If you can see this scuff right here, not sure if the camera's focusing on it. There's a little scuffed area right here. We'll go ahead and wipe that down. And within just a couple seconds, it should look much, much better. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to dress shoes is this edge dressing. I have a, a bottle of black, this one's brown, a bottle of brown and a bottle of black edge dressing. I don't have shoes that um, these would be used on at my disposal at this moment, but sometimes you'll see that the paint has rubbed off of the midsole of the shoes. And if the shoes have a brown midsole, this is basically just a bottle of paint. We're gonna take the cap off and it has a, a little, I don't know what you'd call that, a little cotton ball right there. And then you just, you know, get, get, the, get the paint on it and then we'll just run this across the midsole. I'll go ahead and do it on this one. Uh, this, isn't, this is just like a rubber midsole, so it's not gonna stick. But just for the example, you just run it across the edge right here. And if there is any fading or if the paint's been removed on that midsole, it's gonna absorb that uh, edge dressing and it's gonna look pretty much good as new. And then all you'll need to do is take your rag and then wipe off any of the excess and it should hold that color that it had right there. So if you have any, any dress shoes that need to be brought back to life, edge dressing and Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam are my go-to products. All right, next tool that I wanna talk about is to get the pilling out from the inside of the shoes. I can't, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there's a bunch of pilling inside the heel of the shoe. It's just like the, the fabric has balled up. I'm sure you've seen it on like your, your blankets or on some clothing sometimes. The fabric's just balled up in the back heel of the shoe. An easy way to take care of that is a fabric shaver. This is literally you just turn it on and it's gonna shave the fabric off of that. You can also use like a, a dollar store razor, just a cheap razor blade, uh, but this is gonna be a whole lot, whole lot more simple than doing that. It's gonna be a lot quicker as well. So I like to do, use one of these instead and then you'll just flip, flip it on. Run it inside the heel for just a couple seconds and it should get any of that pilling out of there. Again, I don't know if this is coming up on camera, but if you have any pilling in the back heel of your shoe, a fabric shaver is gonna save your life. All right, so I'm gonna use this shoe to go over the next few tools that I use when cleaning shoes. The first one being, there's just a bunch of like fuzzy stuff on the top of the shoe. This one's pretty straightforward. If there's like hairs and stuff on the shoe or sometimes the insoles kind of caked with hair, just use a lint roller. This one's pretty straightforward. I need to take the top layer off of this. And then just, just lint roll the shoes. This one, again, super straightforward. If you don't have a lint roller, add it to your cleaning setup. It's gonna come in more in handy more often than you could imagine. There we go, now that we got this lint rolled, as you can see, the bottom of this is pretty dirty and a just the dry brush and the pick aren't gonna quite do the bottom of this shoe justice, but I'm gonna get it up to speed. I'm gonna use the, the pick and get as much of the stuff out of the tread as I can, and then I'm gonna go over it with a dry brush and brush all of that off, and then I'm gonna show you how I clean the bottoms of the shoes when they're just a little bit too dirty for the pick and the dry brush. But again, trying to stay away from shoes that need too much effort put into them to clean the bottom, unless they're a shoe that is gonna profit us a lot of money. All right, so this is as far as this shoe is going to get with just the pick and the brush. So I'm gonna show you guys how I clean up these dirtier shoes. It's gonna use the same soap that I used on those midsoles. It's gonna be both the Dawn Power Wash and the Mr. Clean Clean Freak. Just gonna spray some on the bottom. And then this is where a new tool is gonna come in, and that is this Ryobi, it doesn't have to be Ryobi, it's just a electric screwdriver with a brush attachment on the top. Uh, you can get both of these on Amazon or at your local hardware store. This thing just pops right in. It's just a screwdriver attachment. Pop it into this electric screwdriver. 
and you just gotta make sure this thing stays charged. And this is better than using just a regular brush. If you don't have that, you can use a brush. It's gonna be a lot more effort. Uh, this is just gonna make the times you go over the shoe go by a lot faster. So I'm just gonna go over the shoe, making it nice and sudsy. The more sudsy it is, the more it is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you guys what it looks like after. All right, now that we have gone over this, I'm just gonna use a towel and wipe off all the excess soap. And then to get the soap out of the tread, I have a second second brush, it's the same thing. I just like to keep one dry and one wet, uh, just so it doesn't get all muddy inside the, uh, the brush bristles. And then we're just gonna take the brush that we have as our wet brush, and I'm just gonna brush out all the soap from inside the treads. And there we go. It looks just about as good as new. There's still a little bit of soap inside some of these uh, these crevices, but it's not really gonna matter. I leave these to dry overnight and that should take care of it. The only reason I don't like to just leave it how it is and let it dry how it is is because the soap's dirty. And as the soap dries, it's going to still look dirty on the shoe. So I try to brush out as much of it as possible. But again, same concept as with the Sharpie. This is the bottom of the shoes. As long as it looks pretty decent in the photos, it's not gonna be a big deal. Again, the buyer is going to be walking on the bottom of the shoe, so it's not gonna matter all too much. And then just like on the midsoles, if there's any areas, like little small spots that the brush did not quite get, I'll just hit it with the acetone. The acetone comes in handy for just about anything. This does remove paint though, so if, if it's a midsole that has been painted, or if it's an area of the shoe that has paint on it, just be very careful with the acetone. Make sure you're only using it on like the rubber surfaces and stuff that is not gonna be affected by the acetone itself. But the acetone is great little spot cleaner. It's very, very strong. So it will get off anything in any little spots that maybe the soap does not get. Now I, now I will say, because some people do use this, this is a Dremel Versa. It's pretty similar to the uh, screwdriver with the brush attachment, except it is specific. it's not specifically made for shoes, but they market it as something that can clean shoes with. They've got a few different heads. There's this like magic eraser-esque top. They just Velcro on and off. And then there's like a, a rougher one. These work really well. The only reason that I use the screwdriver more than I use the Dremel Versa is because this thing is powerful. I'll just turn it on and maybe you can hear it. Like it, it's moving at a lot higher of a rate than the screwdriver is. So with that, it does clean maybe a little bit better, but with that, it sprays the, the soap and scum all over the place. Um, and I just like to keep my area just a little bit cleaner. And this isn't exactly the cleanest tool, but a lot of people do use this and they do like it. I just prefer the electric screwdriver myself. They're both good options. You can try both of them out and let me know which one you prefer. Now, the next thing that I use very frequently is actually just a lighter. Now this is used in case, I have an example here with these kids LeBrons. As you can see, the um, fabric is kind of fraying in some areas. I Again, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but anytime there's like pulls in the fabric where the fabric is fraying, not, not pilling like the inside of the shoe in the uh, with the fabric shaver was, but if there's just fraying in any of the fabric, you can just catch those fabric pieces on fire and they will burn down to the shoe and then they will stop burning. It's not gonna catch the shoe on fire, it's completely safe. Again, I use this all the time. Sometimes like the toe box of shoes can be really scuffed up and you can just run the lighter across the entire shoe box. It's gonna cinch those pieces of fabric down to the shoe and make the shoe look a lot more clean than it currently is. Now we're just coming down to the last few things that I use when cleaning shoes. Though The main things we've already gone over, but the things that I keep on my desk just in case I need them. Uh, first off being this super glue. This is the best super glue that I have ever used in my opinion. I don't pick up shoes that need repaired very frequently, but sometimes like say, I, I see it very frequently with Hoka's and Brooks. Sometimes the tread will be peeling back and all it needs is glued back down. This stuff works amazing. It's It holds really well, it's thin as water, and it dries almost instantly. Just keep it off your skin. It, it's it's gonna it's gonna dry and it's gonna not want to come off of your skin if you get it on it. So again, this is the super glue I use. Just be very careful with it. It comes in handy, but also don't be picking up shoes that need a ton of gluing back together. Next, I have a couple things that I use to like restore suede shoes. Again, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I tell you guys don't pick up dirty suede unless it's a pair of shoes that can sell for good money even in dirty condition. Suede is just really hard to clean. But just in case I pick up some suede that needs touched up a little bit, I have this suede eraser. You can use this pencil eraser. It's just a regular eraser. Anytime there's scuffs on suede, I will use the eraser to brush out as much of that scuff as I can. And then this is just a wire bristle brush. This, you can just brush the suede 
down all in the same position if the suede just looks like it is, it needs reset. If you brush all the suede down in the same position, it's gonna look a lot cleaner, it's gonna look a lot more new than it did with the, with the suede just all scuffed up and all over the place. Now, really, I think we've gone over just about everything that is on my table. Um, I have Goo Gone here, but I can't tell you the last time I used it. A lot of people use Goo Gone to clean shoes. I'm not one of them. I have it here just in case. The only times I think I've ever used this is if I am getting sticker residue off the bottom of shoes, but I don't usually use Goo Gone. I've had this same bottle for probably three years. That's how little I use it. Um, I keep a pair of scissors just in case a thrift store zip ties a pair of shoes together or I need to cut a tag off or anything, maybe cut some loose strings. I always keep a pair of scissors at the desk. And then there's a thrift store in my area that uses these like metal hooks that like clamp the shoes together. And the only way that I've found to get that off efficiently is a couple pliers. So I just have a couple pliers that I peel that piece of metal off with. A lot of you guys probably uh, don't need pliers, but I need pliers. So I have them at my cleaning setup. And that's, that's really it guys. That is everything that I use to clean shoes. I wanted to go over all the tools that I use because I feel like that would be easier and more uh, faster to digest than you guys just washing me clean for an hour. I don't use every single one of these tools every single time I clean shoes. Again, I'm picking up shoes that need minimal cleaning. Uh, so most of the shoes are just getting a quick wipe down and they're ready to be photographed. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention with magic erasers, you can buy these things in bulk on Amazon, the off brand ones. You can get like a pack of a hundred for $25. There is no reason for you to be buying name brand, Mr. Clean magic erasers. These work just as well. And they are a fraction of the price. I highly recommend just picking up a big bag of a hundred magic erasers for like the same price as 10 Mr. Clean magic erasers. That's a good easy way to save money on your cleaning supplies. And then one thing I don't think I mentioned, I'm sure you can see below me, I put a towel down just to keep my desk clean. I don't wanna completely ruin the desk that I am cleaning at because it is a nice, a nicer desk. So I just put a towel down and that's easy to clean things into. I can brush it off outside and then just take it upstairs to wash it and bring it back down when I'm finished with it. But other than that, I think I've gone over every single tool that I use to clean shoes. If there's something that you use that is not in my repertoire, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. I love learning new methods of cleaning shoes. But again, I think that is everything that I use to clean shoes on a daily basis. So that is, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you wanna see more shoe reselling content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified every time I post future videos and I will see you guys in the next one.